we want to graph one cycle of y equals 3 secant 2x. And then we're going to need to determine the period, the asymptotes, and the range. So now how am I going to even start with this? There's a couple of different ways. We can start with the graph of secant, we can progress through what each one of them looks like, um, and that will get us to where we're going. So let's kind of start there. We can start with our base function, which is y equals the secant of x. So that's our base function. So what does that look like? Now remember, this is one that's usually given to you in your textbook. Hopefully you have looked at it and you do know where it's at. I do have two vertical asymptotes. I have one at pi over 2, and I'm going to have another one that's not very straight at 3 pi over 2. And for the secant, remember, it's going to come down like this, and over here it comes down this way, and then we have this nice little arch. Remember, the lowest point is at 1, and over here it's at negative 1. So that's just our base function. If we change that to modifying the one given just a little bit, let's just leave the amplitude in front, so the 3 secant of x. Now if we do that one, what do you know? Well, the only difference between the first one that I drew and the second one is that we still have the same vertical asymptotes, and this time it has to cross at 3. So this one has to come up like this, and then we've got to have a negative 3 down here, where it's going to come down for our arch, and then over here. I know those are kind of squished, but hopefully that you can see that. So now what I need to know is, what is this 2x in the middle doing to this thing? Well, we need to use our standard formula that has all those a's, b's, c's, and d's in it, so that's y equals a secant of b times x minus c plus d. So I need to get what they gave me in this form. So when I do that, the part in front of the bracket stays the same. Now for b, I need the x to just have 1, so I'm going to factor out a 2. I get x minus, and then how do I get the c? Well, remember, I don't have a c in the original, so I'm going to put a 0. Plus, there's nothing hanging out there, so I have a 0. So now, this is in the form of what I have for the standard, but still gives me the answer that they gave me in the problem. So how can that help me? Well, I know a. So let's change colors so we make sure we can differentiate. So a is the amplitude, and we already know it's 3 because we've already made it a graph, that's this one down here, that just took into account the amplitude. Now what about the period? So we know that b is the period. Now what do we know about that? Well we know that it is 2 pi over b will give us the period, and we already know what b is from our formula up here, it's a 2, so we get that the period is pi. What about c? Well c is 0, as well as d. d is also 0. So those haven't changed anything with our um, graph. Now one thing it does ask us about up here, so we found the period, we need the asymptotes. So how in the world are we going to find those? Well if you remember, I'm going to go ahead and label what we're looking for, so we're looking for the asymptotes. There's a formula for that, so make sure you learn that. It's x equals pi over 4 plus k times 2, uh, sorry, pi over 2. And remember that's for any k that's an integer. So I've got that, that's great. So where does that tell me it's going to be? Well that shows me where it's going to be on the graph. So if I'm looking at the graph, it says that if, so if k is 0, I'm going to have a vertical asymptote at pi over 4. So there's one of them. And then it says if k is 1, I'm going to have one at 3 pi over 4. Okay, so I've got those two. Make sure you do label those so that you remember what they were. Now, what else do we know? Well, we know that we have an amplitude of 3, so that means it's going to have to intersect up here at 3. So it's still going to look the same, so it looks like that. That's going to come down the same way over here. And then it's going to be at negative 3 as well, because it says the amplitude is 3. So what's the only thing we don't have? Oh, we don't have the range yet, right? So remember there is also a formula for the range, and we know that the range goes from negative infinity to a, which we said was 3, or it goes from 3 to positive infinity.